As the summer heats up, we've officially witnessed three years of the Bloodline storyline on WWE television. By the end of the summer, there may not even be a Bloodline on WWE television. For many wrestling fans, this has been one of the greatest stories of their lifetime. For some older fans, it may be the best story of the past few years. No matter what, it has bridged generations of fandom and wrestling, it has elevated multiple superstars, and at the center of it all, there is one man. Roman Reigns. It's only appropriate that we start our Bloodline recap with the most important player in this story. Chapter 1, The Early Beginnings and the Road to WrestleMania 37. It all began in August of 2020 after The Fiend Bray Wyatt defeated Braun Strowman to win the WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam. It had been five months since the pandemic era got going and WWE found themselves in a very challenging situation like everyone else with no fans allowed to attend shows due to the pandemic. Roman Reigns was out of action since he pulled out of WrestleMania 36 in a big match with Goldberg and he did so to take care of his own health and his family and then the Thunderdome got going. After Bray Wyatt defeated Strowman, Roman Reigns returned and viciously attacked both men with a steel chair, shocking everyone online, leaving fans excited and confused about whether this long-awaited and anticipated and desired heel turn by the big dog who just wasn't having a big impact with fans wanting to cheer him as much as someone would hope had finally happened. Had we finally seen the turn? With only a week between two premium live events, SummerSlam was followed up with Payback. WWE quickly set up a triple threat match for the Universal Championship at Payback involving Bray, Braun Strowman, and, yes, Roman Reigns. Adam Pearce, the WWE official, found himself scrambling to get Reigns to sign his contract for the match, which is when it was revealed that he was the newest Paul Heyman guy, cementing his villainous ways, manipulating and playing everyone up until the last minute. This was not the big dog. This was someone else showing up in a prime situation with Paul Heyman at their side, performing one of the weirdest loopholes in WWE history, where Reigns sat back and let Braun and Bray womp on each other at payback. Coming in at the last minute, signing the contract during the match, is that even legal? And stepping in to capture the WWE Universal Championship. Little did anyone know that this would kickstart one of the greatest world title reigns in the history of pro wrestling in the last four decades. To get things, WWE had booked a fatal four-way match on SmackDown to determine Roman Reigns' first Universal title challenger. The original match saw Big E versus Baron Corman, Sheamus, and Matt Riddle. But after Big E was taken out, Paul Heyman pulled some strings upon Roman Reigns' orders and put his cousin, Jey Uso, in the match. After Jey Uso became nepotistically the number one contender, it instantly elevated him to main event status, and soon enough he would be dubbed main event Jey Uso. But before that happened, he got steamrolled by Roman Reigns at Clash of Champions. If Roman Reigns aligning himself with Paul Heyman was a sleazy enough thing to do, his relentless assault of his own flesh and blood Jey Uso solidified him as truly the top villain in the business after he was previously maybe the top babyface in the business. The beatdown resulted in an injured Jimmy Uso coming to ringside to throw in the towel for his own tag team partner and brother, reluctantly acknowledging Reigns as the Tribal Chief. A rematch between Jay and Roman was set for the next month in an I Quit Hell in a Cell match, inarguably one of the best matches from WWE's No Fans Thunderdome era saw Reigns stamp in his authority by once again giving Jey Uso a one-sided beatdown, and he took an injured Jimmy Uso in a guillotine chokehold, forcing Jey to utter the words, I quit, I quit, don't hurt my brother. Yes, Jey Uso eventually fell in line and began to listen to the orders from his high-ranking cousin, often being berated and manipulated. 
The month of November 2020 was likely less eventful, with Reigns defeating Drew McIntyre in an excellent Universal Championship versus WWE Championship match at Survivor Series. The onslaught of tough challengers would continue with the always fighting Kevin Owens beginning his feud, not just with Reigns, but with the entire now defined Bloodline faction. He went on to lose a trilogy of outstanding matches against Reigns, first TLC, then a steel cage match five days later on SmackDown that was seen by millions of people, and then a third with a last man standing match at Royal Rumble. With WrestleMania soon on the horizon, Edge was the 2021 Men's Royal Rumble winner, giving him a shot at the championship. Daniel Bryan then tried to pry the title from Roman unsuccessfully at two consecutive premium live events, Elimination Chamber and Fastlane. Roman Reigns continued to be unfair to his championship challengers. The first of those challenges from Daniel Bryan saw him defeat five other men in a truly classic Elimination Chamber match, earning a universal title shot. But here's the twist. The match was immediately after, and he lost to Roman Reigns in only 95 seconds. Oh, real easy night for you there, Roman. Don't try too hard. Only 95 seconds. That's right. You're not paid by the hour. This was followed by Edge officially announcing he would take on Roman Reigns with his Royal Rumble win at WrestleMania. But before that happened, he was the special guest enforcer in a rematch between Reigns and Daniel Bryan, who obviously has an issue with how he was treated. Bryan made Reigns tap out. That's right, Roman Reigns tapped out as the Universal Champion, but eh, didn't make a title change because there was no referee to call it. Reigns retained the title after all of these shenanigans, shenanigans, I tell you, rather than a straightforward WrestleMania one-on-one -on -one main event, we got Edge taking on Roman Reigns with Daniel Bryan being added as a triple threat match. In what was probably one of the most dominating pinfalls ever, Reigns stacked Edge on top of Daniel Bryan after crashing a steel chair upon both of them, walking in and out of WrestleMania with the WWE Universal Championship, something he would eventually do three years in a row. Meanwhile, Jey Uso won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Chapter 2 the bloodline unifies in the ascent to undisputed greatness. Roman Reigns was able to end Daniel Bryan's WWE career and send him packing over to All Elite Wrestling in an outstanding match on SmackDown. Jimmy Uso returned to action during this time and showed a good deal of resistance towards the Tribal Chief, stating he was, quote, nobody's bitch. The Swiss cyborg Cesaro emerged as a surprising candidate to now challenge Reigns, but he fell short at WrestleMania Backlash in an outstanding match that deserved all of the stars you could give it. And it was definitely one of Reigns' best title defenses to date. The Mysterios, Dominic and Rey would then get roughed up by the bloodline. Dominic got powerbombed out of the ring. Rey Mysterio would be able to challenge Reigns for the title inside Hell in Cell, not successfully. And then once WWE returned to the road with regular touring live shows, Edge was the next challenger. With live crowds back, a blockbuster main event for Money in the Bank, Roman Reigns retained the Universal title against Edge thanks to interference from Seth Rollins. Yeah, not the Usos or anyone else in the Anawahi family. Each title defense followed by an explosive return, and this title defense wasn't the big story of the night with WWE in front of live fans again. No, it was John Cena stealing the show to face off against Reigns. Oh, and we forgot to mention that the Usos began their record-breaking reign as tag team champions when they dethroned Rey and Dominic in a pre-show match on Money in the Bank. It didn't take too much convincing for Jey Uso to fall in line then. Though they had faced off before, it was under very different circumstances. We were getting Cena versus Reigns going into SummerSlam, and it felt big. Fans back, that energy there, and a big time main event for WWE in a stadium setting. And thankfully, this second match completely outdid their first one back in 2017. AEW had recently debuted CM Punk, so how was WWE going to counter? by bringing back Brock Lesnar at the end of SummerSlam, who returned at the main event to confront Roman Reigns. 
Brock Lesnar was absent through most of the pandemic era and later revealed that he even considered retiring in general because he didn't want to perform without an audience. Lesnar simply made his presence known, but their actual feud got started a couple of months later. But before that, Reigns had the returning Finn Balor as his next challenger. Balor, who was supposed to face Reigns at SummerSlam, but a mishap resulted in John Cena signing the contract instead. He first defeated Finn Balor in early September on SmackDown, but at Extreme Rules, Balor would step up his game and bring out his demon persona. It's worth noting at this point, the demon had a very strong win-loss record in WWE. This title match, though outstanding bell to bell, was problematic in terms of ring posts. That's right, Balor almost hitting the coup de grace to take out Reigns at the end of the match, but the turnbuckle snapped and that cost him the match? Yeah, people didn't like that. A new path to WrestleMania began soon after, and it was Brock Lesnar that Reigns would face first at Crown Jewel, defeating him thanks to help from, guess who, the Usos. A small deviation saw Reigns defeat the then WWE Champion Big E in a Champion vs. Champion match at Survivor Series 2021. Sami Zayn became the next number one contender for the title, and Brock Lesnar first attacked him, allowing Reigns to beat him in just mere seconds. More on Sami Zayn in a little bit. It should be noted at this point, Brock Lesnar had been regularly just stirring the pot because of his relationship with Paul Heyman. The first twist was Roman Reigns firing his special counsel because he was never clear on whose side he was on. Heyman's well-documented history with Lesnar and now his current role with Reigns made a conflict. The second match between Reigns and Lesnar was supposed to happen at day one, but because Roman Reigns got COVID at the time, it was cleared and we got a completely different match. WWE decided to go with the long lasting consequences and inserted Brock Lesnar in the WWE Championship match between Big E, Bobby Lashley, and Kevin Owens, along with Seth Rollins. Brock Lesnar won the title and teased unifying it with Roman Reigns. But he wouldn't get there so fast because the dream feud between Lesnar and Lashley resulted in them facing off at the Royal Rumble in a whole dusty finish thing. Also on the card for Royal Rumble in St. Louis was a special face-off for the Universal Championship between Reigns and his old S.H.I.E.L.D. faction member and former friend, Seth Rollins. Rollins was purely under the skin of the Tribal Chief, and it played into this match with Seth Rollins coming out to the old S.H.I.E.L.D. music. Yeah, mind games. Reigns couldn't simply finish off Seth Rollins bell to bell and was forced to use a steel chair and get disqualified. Yeah, that is the only incomplete part of this story. It was on the same night where the next big twist came as Paul Heyman, who was back with Lesnar by then, handed the WWE Championship title belt to Roman Reigns and allowed him to attack the Beast Incarnate, leading to Bobby Lashley becoming a world champion again. Yeah, that was that dusty finish we talked about. The Usos continue to gallop as tag team champions, running through the New Day. An infuriated Brock Lesnar entered number 30 in the Royal Rumble match after losing the WWE title earlier in the night, you know, Heyman turning on him, going on to win the entire Rumble match for a second time in his career. Rather than choosing to face Roman Reigns right away, he put himself in a WWE title match at Elimination Chamber. During the Chamber match, he took out Bobby Lashley, who was unable to continue and regained the WWE title once again. With Reigns having defeated Goldberg at Elimination Chamber, this immediately set up a champion versus champion WrestleMania showdown where both world titles would be unified. Jimmy and Jay had a successful night at WrestleMania 38 when they retained the SmackDown Tag Team titles, while Roman Reigns defeated Brock Lesnar once again to become the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. For the second time, he walked in and out of WrestleMania with the title in hand. As the pyro blasted off into the Texas sky, Roman Reigns had two world titles, even more dominant, even more the supreme superstar in all of wrestling. Whether you liked it or not, he had built up a mountain underneath him and he was on top of it. Chapter three, the peak of the story and the eventual cracks forming underneath. The third chapter of the bloodline has been the best one by far. 
and the most eventful. You may have noticed that Roman was the central to everything that was happening. But after WrestleMania 38, there began a major shift in focus to the other players in the Bloodlines dynamic. This change first began when Roman officially signed a new contract with WWE that made him a part-time featured superstar. This meant that WWE was going to have to rely on the Usos and Heyman to carry on this storyline and the presence of everything Bloodline on television when they simply didn't have Roman there. He first teamed with the Usos to defeat RK Bro and Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania Backlash. The Usos would soon defeat RK Bro to unify the WWE Tag Team Championships between Raw and SmackDown. WWE fans were going to get used to seeing Roman Reigns periodically when he would have his first title defense of the undisputed Universal Championship just two months after WrestleMania against Matt Riddle on SmackDown. Yes, he won the match. It was around this time that the very charismatic Sami Zayn began to associate himself backstage with the bloodline. He found himself getting rejected by a skeptical Jey Uso while getting along with his brother Jimmy. The timing of Sami being added to this entire story, which at this point had been going on for 18 months, was adding a breath of fresh air to everything and a level of comedy as well. It was rumored and reported that WWE was looking to have Reigns face off against the Viper Randy Orton, playing off of the whole RK Bro fallout thing at SummerSlam, but an injury to the Viper forced him to call in Brock Lesnar for one more clash with Reigns. Thankfully, WWE advertised their SummerSlam clash as the last match ever between the two, since this was their sixth and final match that would be determined in a last man standing affair in Nashville, Tennessee. Despite the series between Lesnar and Reigns, three of them WrestleMania main events, Reigns and Brock Lesnar lacked the chemistry they once had in the ring, but the last man standing match proved to be the best of their series, as the Tribal Chief stood tall with the referee calling the match without even making a full 10 count. Also, the ring was flipped over by a bulldozer? Yeah, it was an insane scene in Tennessee. With one of WWE's biggest international live events, Clash at the Castle, coming around the corner in Cardiff, Wales, Scotland's Drew McIntyre stepped up to the plate. The Usos weren't allowed to travel to the UK because of some visa issues, and Paul Heyman didn't come either, leaving Roman Reigns to enter into this match without his usual insurance policy at ringside. McIntyre proved to be the biggest threat to Reigns so far, nearly defeating him several times in the match. The gasp from the audience during those pinfalls that didn't get all the way there, and we saw the debut of a new insurance policy for Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa, who ruined everything for McIntyre. After helping Roman Reigns retain the Universal Championship at The Clash, Solo was officially inducted into the bloodline as the faction's enforcer, but not before he acknowledged the tribal chief. Sami Zayn continued to have an increasing pestering presence around the bloodline, and although Roman Reigns initially hinted at wanting nothing to do with him, he inducted him as an honorary ooze much to the dismay of Jey Uso, who still didn't trust Sami Zayn. This was one of the most viral video moments of WWE for the year. And this was all despite, over the last few months, Sami Zayn helping the Usos retain their titles. He took the bullet for them in the form of a Claymore kick to the face to protect Roman Reigns, and he did it all to prove himself to the bloodline. Oddly enough, Solo Sokoa didn't seem to take to Sami, better than his own elder brothers, the Usos. The challengers continued for Reigns, and this one may be the most surprising that we cover. Logan Paul. The internet celebrity darling had only two matches in WWE, all of them successful affairs, but now he was pushed to the main event of Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia, where he had the opportunity of a lifetime to win WWE's top prize in only his third pro wrestling match. Yes, celebrities get to do that. Though Logan Paul is considered a polarizing figure on the internet and entertainment, he proved himself to be better than all of the expectations and had an outstanding performance against Roman Reigns in Saudi Arabia. His brother Jake Paul's interference wasn't enough to stop the force that was the bloodline that also got involved in the match. Sami Zayn took half a year, but he finally earned the respect 
of the Bloodline at Survivor Series War Games. Inside the double cage, the Bloodline, including Sami Zayn, went on to face a combined force of Kevin Owens, Drew McIntyre, and the Brawling Brutes, with Kevin Owens being the one count away from being the first man to pin Roman Reigns in three years. Kevin Owens had a long documented history with Sami Zayn. They were friends and enemies throughout the years. They came into wrestling together. Kevin was demanding Sami Zayn to turn on the bloodline before hitting his friend, turn rival, now turn friend, you get the point. He low blowed Kevin Owens, allowing Jey Uso to win the match for the bloodline. After war games, Roman Reigns resumed his feud with KO. Owens was able to get John Cena to come back for a one-off big bout on SmackDown on December 30th, 2022 to defeat Reigns and Sami Zayn in a tag team match. But Sami Zayn's longtime association with KO led to an instant distrust once again from Roman, who eventually accused Zayn of infiltrating his beloved bloodline. This led to one of the best Monday Night Raw in-ring segments of all time, The Trial of Sami Zayn, where Paul Heyman served as the prosecutor making a case against Zayn, with Sami Zayn refusing to make a case for himself, Reigns ordering Solo Sokoa to take him out with that lethal thumb to the neck, only for, surprise, surprise, Jey Uso to come to Sami Zayn's defense. I thought they didn't like each other. By this point, a large part of this story had shifted focus from Roman Reigns to the dynamic between Jey Uso and Sami Zayn. From distrusting him and hating him, Jey Uso went to bat for him and saved Sami Zayn for the time being. The bearded and bold Sami Zayn immediately repaid his faith that same night during the Uso's title defense after Jimmy suffered an injury against the Judgment Day, with authority figure Adam Pearce stating that it would be declared a forfeit and the title would have to change hands, Sami Zayn stepped in as Jay Uso's partner and successfully retained the titles on behalf of Jimmy and Jay. This is where WWE started to tug at all of our emotional heartstrings because of just one week later, it all came crashing to a halt. After Roman Reigns defeated KO in their third match against each other at Royal Rumble, Sami Zayn was ordered to get in the ring and prove his loyalty to the bloodline in front of tens of thousands of people and assault his old friend, KO, with a steel chair. Feeling like enough was enough, enough damage had been done, Sami Zayn refused to do it and started getting berated by Roman Reigns, who he attacked in what is now one of the most shocking chair shots heard round the world. It was executed perfectly, as anyone could have done it. We knew it was going to happen, but it was still something that took disbelief upon the face of Jey Uso. The shock on Jimmy Solo's face eventually resulted in Sami Zayn being taken out by the rest of the bloodline, except Jey Uso, who refused to be a part of this beatdown. An emotional Sami Zayn was now set out to challenge Roman Reigns and topple him in his hometown of Montreal, Quebec, Canada at Elimination Chamber. Jey Uso's true intentions and loyalties were also being questioned. He returned in the very, and we mean very, last minute on SmackDown to defend the tag team titles against Braun Strowman and Ricochet. Coming through the crowd, where were you, dude? Even after defending the titles, Jay's stance was unclear. There was even more doubt thrown in here when Sami Zayn approached him backstage and personally acknowledged him over Roman. Oh, dueling acknowledgments. Throughout this time, Sami Zayn was also actively trying to make amends with Kevin Owens, who couldn't come around because of what happened with him for the past few months at the hands of the Bloodline. In one of the best Canadian WWE matches of all time, Sami Zayn failed to topple Roman Reigns off his throne at Elimination Chamber when he accidentally speared Jey Uso, who refused to attack him despite Reigns' orders. Montreal may not have gotten what they wanted to see in their hometown, but they did get to witness Sami Zayn being saved by Kevin Owens. Although it looked like they had finally reunited after five years of strife, Owens still refused to team with his old friend. 
The month of March had came around and Jey Uso's stance was still unclear, forcing Reigns to give a one-week ultimatum to make his decision. Thankfully for him, Jey Uso made his position clear a few days later, when he pretended to choose Sami Zayn, only to superkick him and reunite with his brother Jimmy. Roman Reigns' WrestleMania feud against Cody Rhodes began. This is where we saw the Universal Championship and the Tag Team Championship storylines intertwine. The American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, who had returned to WWE at the previous year's WrestleMania to much fanfare, played an important role as a mediator between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, eventually convincing Owens to extend the olive branch. That same night, Owens saved Sami Zayn from the Usos' attack, and the two were finally reunited in another incredible moment in this story. With all three men now laser-focused on their challenges to the bloodline at WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes became the first man to pin Solo Sokoa on the main roster of WWE, while KO and Sami Zayn geared up for the main event against the Usos. It was only appropriate that the Tag Team Championship match headlined WrestleMania 39 Night 1, something that had never happened before. And they got the spotlight in the grandest stage of them all, putting on one of the best tag team matches in WWE history. KO and Sami Zayn dethroning the Usos to end their record-breaking 622-day reign as the unified tag team champions of the WWE. Cody Rhodes, on the other hand, didn't have the best of luck. Despite Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn's involvement in the main event of Night 2 of WrestleMania to neutralize the Usos, he couldn't finish the proverbial story as Roman Reigns walked out of his third consecutive WrestleMania with the Universal title intact. At this point, was it getting too long on the tooth? On Raw after WrestleMania 39, Cody Rhodes immediately challenged Roman Reigns to a rematch, but they drifted in different directions when his 2B tag team partner Brock Lesnar turned on him to kickstart a new feud. With no challengers emerging in the wake of Cody Rhodes, the Tribal Chief took a well-deserved rest. But you can imagine that the most manipulative and controlling man in all of the WWE wasn't happy about the Usos losing those tag team titles. This caused an even bigger crack in the Anawahi bloodline than anything before, and it was only worsened when the Usos failed to recapture the titles on SmackDown in late April. Despite Solo Sokoa and the Usos defeating KO, Sami Zayn, and Matt Riddle at Backlash, there was a moment when Solo nearly took out Jay, who even urged him to go ahead with it and attack him. He didn't turn on Jay Uso, but the damage had been done. Getting sick of the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn problem, Roman decided to take matters into his own hands and revealed that he and Solo would compete for the undisputed tag team titles at Night of Champions, and not the Usos. Now, Jimmy Uso was getting the verbal lashings upon his character backstage by Roman on SmackDown. And later that same night, Roman and Solo were the scheduled guests to appear on the KO show to build hype for Night of Champions. But the Usos came out instead. KO, continuing to stir the pot yet again, told Jimmy Uso that he was right this entire time about Roman. And Jimmy declared himself the Tribal Chief. Oh, but that's Roman's nickname. Things finally erupted at Night of Champions when the Usos interfered in the tag team title main event. The chaos led to the Usos accidentally super kicking Solo Sokoa. An infuriated Roman Reigns came in and started to yell at them like children, only for Jimmy Uso to snap off an electric, game changing super kick to Roman Reigns' face. And this indirectly helped KO and Sami Zayn retain their titles. Even Sami Zayn admitted that his role with the Bloodline story is more or less over after a full year. It seemed like he managed to get the last laugh. Jimmy Uso couldn't say the same, not yet anyway. When celebrating his thousand days as Universal Champion, Roman Reigns got a new look for the Universal Championship belt. But the celebration was immediately interrupted by Jimmy and Jay. It was another dramatic moment in the Bloodline story as Jimmy got right in Reigns' face, but soon admitted he wanted to reconcile. He even got Solo Sokoa on his side, or at least he thought he did anyway, when Solo told Reigns that he acknowledged him, 
but chose his brothers instead. Oh boy. Although Reigns and Jimmy did hug it out, the tribal chief showed no intentions of being remorseful. And that was where the next twist came with Solo Sokoa taking out Jimmy and effectively kicking him out of the bloodline. Reigns still expects Jey Uso to fall in line, but these are no longer cracks. These are seismic shifts in a family. And that's where we are so far. Enjoy it while it lasts, because this is a once in a lifetime story. Do you agree? Let us know in the comments below.